Hey there, my name's Liam, and this video is going to take the guesswork out of using perspective. It's going to give you a professional level understanding of where to place vanishing points, and it's going to really change the game for you if you don't already know this stuff. So we're going to talk about the cone vision and standing point. These are things that I didn't know about till very late in life. Um, this kind of perspective knowledge uh, wasn't shown to me because I took fine art in college as opposed to design. So this is definitely college level stuff that I missed. And so I really love it. So hopefully this helps you and uh, will speed you along on your journey to becoming the artist that you want to be. If you like art and comic books, please click subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this video. I greatly appreciate it. So first things first, the horizon line. Easy, right? All right. Next, we're going to figure out how much of the world we're going to show. And a good starting point for that is 60 degrees of your field of view. Call that the cone of vision. Why is it a cone? Well, I'm glad you asked. 60 degrees actually doesn't cover too much of your field of view. When you consider that a cube or any kind of right angle is 90 degrees, 60 degrees is only two thirds of that. And that's kind of a big deal. So let's talk about this for a little bit. So 60 degrees is a benchmark for where you want to fit the frame of your painting or comic book frame or whatever it is you're doing. 60 degrees, if you go outside of that, you're gonna start getting some distortion and moving towards five point perspective. Distortion and five point perspective are awesome. I mean, check out these works by MC Escher, by Kim Jong Gi and Jason Sean Alexander, which are a couple of my personal faves. But in order to get to that point, you know, you really got to know the basics. So let's get a little bit more in depth on this cone of vision and the standing point. Here's a little setup I made the other day that gives us a lot of information. So I have a cool looking skull set up and the protractor on the bottom there is where the camera is. And that's the standing point. More on that later. I've marked out the 60 degree cone of vision and around the skull, I made a little wire frame that shows us 90 degree angles. Looking through the camera, you can see that our 60 degree angle from the standing point has changed, but that still gives us the 60 degree field of view. So I pulled it back so we have some room for the vanishing points and establish the horizon line and then find the first vanishing point. Wire frames are not my specialty. I think I got to move this over just a little bit more. So let's get rid of the picture and make like we're looking for that second vanishing point, planning out our own drawing. With one side of the cube fleshed out, we're going to find our standing point by looking at the line of sight and then doing that 60 degree cone of vision. Once you've established your vanishing point and your standing point, you connect them. And then 90 degrees from that line will be your second vanishing point when it intersects with the horizon. So that's basically the formula for finding a missing vanishing point. I can't say this is the best example because I really messed up on that wire frame, but, uh, but that's okay. I've only been working on this video for a couple weeks. The takeaway is that once you have your standing point, you have the basis for your angles and vanishing points are always 90 degrees. Here is my friend Jeff's customized Corvette. And here's a shot I took of his Corvette using the pano feature on my phone to mimic a fisheye lens. It's a great hack if you don't want to buy a wide angle lens or get a payment plan on a new phone. Jeff's Corvette is pretty. So in this photo, the vanishing points are fairly obvious. So let's use those to figure out the cone of vision. Now that we've got the vanishing points, let's get the line of sight. Boom. And then we know that the vanishing points are 90 degrees apart. So we'll put that in there. And then what you do is connect the vanishing points at a 90 degree angle using the line of sight as an axis. And boom, you have your standing point. So now we'll figure out the cone of vision. The cone of vision, you need the line of sight and you need the horizon and a 60 degree angle from the standing point. And there's our 60 degree cone of vision. Now what you do is you move that down so that the center of your cone of vision is your line of sight. And there you have it. That's about all I got for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope this helped you out. If it did, please let me know, leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you soon with more tips and comic book stuff and kind of art geekiness. See you around. Bye.